I'm sure many of you watching this would have seen something like this out in the wild or potentially have even done it yourself using context managers and this with statement. Uh, this particular one is opening a file as F and then you know reading the file and printing out to the console. It's pretty simple. Uh, if you've never heard of context managers before or have never seen that with statement in your life, then I do have a separate video which will be in the cards if I remember to do it uh, that goes over the basics of context managers and how to use them in a little bit more detail so you can get caught up. Uh, this video is going to be focusing on something different. In this video, we're actually going to be learning how to create our own context managers. Uh, you can create a context manager out of a function or a class. We're going to do, start with classes and we're going to move on to functions. And to give an example, I've you know recreated the open slightly. I felt like file operations are probably the easiest um, and the most effective way to convey what I'm trying to say here. Um, so you know, we're just doing a file object. This one is one I uh, I prepared earlier in the oven, 200 degrees. We have our init, which takes a path. We can then open the file, close the file, and read the file. We can't write to the file, but you know we can do everything that's important for this example. So to work with the object like it is, we would need to do something like file equals file and then hello.txt, which is our text file. Then we need to do file.open. Then we need to do uh, file or print file.read. And then we need to do file dot close and we can see if we load the terminal and run the program that it you know it does open and read the file and it closes the file perfectly fine however this is a little bit clunky and it's a little bit cumbersome but with context managers we can actually make it a little bit nicer so if we just get rid of all this for a second and then we come uh, back into the class and then we create two new dunder methods uh, dunder enter which just takes self and in most instances, you would want to return self. You can actually return anything out of this if you want, but in about 99% of instances, you would want to return self out of this. And then we want to do exit as well, which takes the exception type, exception value, and exception traceback. We'll come back to that in a bit, and we'll just leave that empty for now. So this enter is called, if I just load the example back up again, uh, this enter is called whenever we enter a block. So on this with open line as F in this example, the enter is being called. The exit is called when you exit the block of code. So down here, if I were to say, you know, print hello, at this point in time, the context manager has exited. Uh, this exit, you know, um, method has run and we're now outside of our context block. And this allows us to do some you know, pretty cool things you know, behind the scenes in terms of, well, things we would want to be able to do. So in the exit, for example, we want to be able to close the file without having to explicitly say to close the file. And we can do that. That's what the open does. So if we just go into the enter real quick, and we can just print in here, uh, entering, let's do entering context. And we can just use self.open. You know, we already have an open thing here. We don't need to uh, to rewrite anything fancy. And then we just do self.open and then we return self and that's fine. At this point, we can actually use the context manager as a context manager. So we could do file uh, or with file hello.txt as f and then print f.read. And we end up with the same result as we did before. So you can see we're entering the context we're reading the file and then we're displaying it onto the console. But now we're only using two lines instead of four when it actually comes to reading um, or opening and reading the file. In terms of closing, what we can do is simply just do the same thing here. What has happened there? I did not tell it to do that. Uh, exiting context. We'll just put that in there for debugging purposes. And then we can just do self.close. Exit doesn't need to return anything. I don't think. Oh. It can return something. We'll get onto that in a, in a bit. Um, as you can see here, so we're entering the context. We're now displaying uh, the contents of the file. There's a new line here in the file. Um, and then we are exiting the context. You know what? To make it a bit clearer, I'll do uh, that. Just so it's a little bit less confusing. Um, so that's just a really basic idea of how context managers work. There are a few extra things that I want to show you with classes before we move on to functions. The first of which is actually utilizing these. So the exception type is the class of the error. 
the exception value is the instance of the error, and the exception TB is the traceback object associated with the error. We're not going to be touching this today. We're going to be looking, well, we're going to be looking mainly at the value. So I have a, a separate file here on the side called jank. And this has just a single character. It's a, it's a byte string slash x9c uh, character, which cannot be decoded in the Unicode file format. So what we can do, if we try to read that file, we'll get an error. So what you can try to do when I, you know, actually get the sentences in the right order, is do if is instance uh, exception value, and then we can say Unicode decode error, and then uh, print uh, that file cannot be read, um, or I guess or whatever that'll do. And then if we run it on the hello.txt, uh, we'll see it's still perfectly fine. But if you run it on the jank file we'll see that we get the error, but we have our entering context. Uh, that file cannot be read. Exiting context, so we exit the context. So this uh, you know, self.close has been activated. And then by default, um, uh, Python uh, re-raises the error to the top level. We can actually suppress that behavior. Uh, this returns none normally this exit returns none normally which is false in a truthy check however if we return anything that returns true in a truthy check so we can do um i think actually probably the best way to do it would be um errors equals false and then errors equals true because this way we can still close the file and then we if we return errors then um, you know, if the if the thing errors, then you know we actually do get to close the file. So if we return true, then we don't raise the error. So we can print uh, this is a thing, and it works fine. So we've now suppressed the error. We've still you know um, uh, sent out a message. We could you know replicate the error if we wanted to. But if I uh, if I just set this to always be false, for example, then we can see that last line never gets printed because the execution of the program is terminated at that point. So those are things that I wanted to show you with regards to a class. This is probably in you know almost every case how you're going to be using context managers. You can actually do it in functions as well. I just realized my, my Pepe is off. There we go. Uh, you can actually do it for functions as well. I'm not convinced there's really a use case for it, but I'm going to show you it anyway, just in case you find one. So we're going to create uh, a new file here. If I just lured my notes, uh, so I can remember. So we can do from context lib import context manager, and this is a decorator. So we can attach a decorator onto here, and then uh, I'm going to do some more opening of files because again, it's the, the easiest. And we can do open file path like that. And if we just you know do this for now, I can explain what's going on. This context manager decorator adds boilerplate in some way or another, and you know activates our enter and exit or applies enter and exit logic for us. I don't quite know the um, you know the background of how that happens, but it allows us to use our with on a function, which is actually probably what the open uh, built in is doing so I guess that's the use case for it um, but in, in terms of stuff that isn't built in I'm, I'm a little bit less convinced but we can do print uh, entering context and we can do f equals open so we can use the actual open uh, path we can try and yield a uh, yield f and I'll explain why we use yield in a second and then finally we can f.close. So we're just making sure that the file gets closed when we're done with it, regardless of if there's an error or not. And then we could do print exiting context like that, just so you can see what's going on. The reason we use yield instead of return is because the context manager or Python needs to be able to re-enter uh, this function once we've done what we need to do with it. If you return it out, it will error. Um, I forget what the error is, but it will it will complain that it's not a generator and ask you to use yield instead, more or less. So you do actually need to use yield here. You cannot use this like a generator though. So you can uh, you can only yield one value out of it, um, which is why I'm kind of of the opinion it's a bit odd. 
But I thought I'd include it anyway for, for completeness. So we can do with open file uh, hello.txt as f and then we can print f.read and then if we do uh, where is it uh, func.py you see it does exactly the same thing. We have the entering context, the exiting context, we read the file and we do all that. If anyone can kind of figure out outside of the open built-in why this is useful to anyone then please do let me know um because you know i'd like to know if it is useful because maybe i can use it in some of my stuff but that is the basic idea of context managers it's a little bit of a longer one that i than i've done in 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 recent times and it might be a little bit more complicated so if you found the video helpful at any point then consider liking to let me know and subscribing if you really enjoyed it if you have any questions the comment section is down there i don't buy it, i promise uh, so you can ask me anything and I'll I'll do my best to answer it. While you're down there, the join button is also down there for you to become a channel member or if you want to support. Otherwise, you can join the Patreon. If you do either of those things, one pound a month, you could be on this screen like these people. And I will see you in the next video where we are talking about... What are we talking about? I had a plan. Oh yeah, Visual Studio Code shortcuts. I was going to go over shortcuts and stuff as a really quick video uh, to round out the week. So uh, hopefully I'll see you for that.